Hey guys, so we're going to try out painting our landscape. So we're going to use tempura paint and we're going to use old catalogs as palettes. So when you're done with the color, you can just tear off that page, scoop the color into the middle and throw it away without making a mess. So the first thing I'm going to do before we really paint is I'm going to do what's called a wash, a color wash. And that pretty much means we're going to paint over the whole thing with a thin layer of a color. And we're actually going to use uh, like a red or a magenta because that's the opposite color of what most of this picture is going to be, green. Okay? And so then if there is any time when the white would show through, instead of being white, it's going to be this kind of very thin layer. So I put the paint on my little palette. I'm going to get some on my brush. And I'm kind of spreading it throughout my bristles because I want to get a very thin layer. I'm going to spread this out because I still want to see the pencil lines through my painting. See? So I don't want it thick. It's pretty much just going to end up making my whole paper pink. Okay, so you can see I filled it up with my color wash. Now anywhere where I think it might be a little darker, I can add a little more of that wash color. I think there's going to be like shadows. But it's not supposed to be like the real painting yet. So don't worry about trying to make it perfect or actually paint inside the lines. We're just spreading on this underneath color. Okay, now we're going to let that dry completely. Okay guys, so the underpainting is completely dry and I can still see my lines. So we're going to try now uh, for our next step to just do the green and the yellow. Um, hopefully, since we just put a little bit of paint underneath, it will not be too um, thick or show through. So on the palette, you're going to have green and yellow. And you're not going to be worried about washing your brush because the colors can mix a little bit. The whole point of having the green and yellow is that some of it's going to be greenish and some of it's going to be yellowish. Alright. Alright, so I'm going to get a little green on my brush and start painting into this first hill. And then anywhere I want to lighten it up, I'm just going to get a little yellow on my brush. So, see, I'm just going over what I've already washed with color, but now with the green and the yellow. So the big thing here is that we're going to try to not paint our pencil line. And so you're going to have to be very careful to go around and not paint on the pencil lines so that you still know where you need to make your, your black outlines later. And that will help if you have like yellow close to the line or dark green close to the line and then the next section's a little different. It'll make it easier to tell where the line is. I'm just trying to go around my line best I can. Get a little green and a little yellow. And the 
it's okay if they mix. Not worried about washing our brush. So wherever you think it needs to be a lighter, put a little yellow. Wherever you think it needs to be darker, try and keep it mostly green. So you can see after we paint this layer, you can't see that magenta, pink, purple, red anymore. It's just the green, but it helps the green look really vibrant and strong. Okay, so all the green and yellow is done for now. You know, if you need to touch anything up or add any more, finish that up. Um, so now you're going to have to let it dry again. And you can see I left lots of little pink showing through anywhere where I had a pencil line. It's okay if I, you know, covered it up a little bit. It's just for you to be able to remember where your lines are for later. If you cover them up and forget, you're just going to kind of have to guess where your lines go. Mm, okay. So we'll let this dry and move on to the next colors. Okay, we've done our things that we wanted to be green and yellow, and so now we're going to do any detail colors. So we've got orange, white, blue, red, and so for any of our detailing. And today we're going to be very, very careful because we might need to clean our brush in between colors. So far we've been able to kind of mix colors and we didn't need to wash off the brush, but this time a blue and an orange mixing together is going to make a very different color. It's going to make a brown. So, get a little bit of my orange. I'm going to paint my fox. And whatever animal you have here, you're going to have to pick what color you want it to be. If you want to, you can kind of let that dry while you paint something else and come back and give it another coat if it looks like it needs it. Okay, so then you're going to wash your brush. After you wash your brush, you're going to make sure that you make let any water go back in the cup. If you need to, you can even squeeze it with your finger as long as you're not getting too dirty. We don't want to just put soaking wet water all over the paper towel. It's really just to dry it off a little bit. If y'all go straight from the cup to the paper towel, it's going to get soaping wet. No one's going to be able to use that paper towel anymore. I'm not going to come and change paper towels every three seconds. Okay, now I'm painting my little barn. It's okay if things don't turn out perfect, if you get outside the lines or you go over your pencil line a little bit just try your best we're going to go back with black for our last step and trace over anything 
that didn't turn out quite right. Okay, so now let's say you want to mix colors because you want the top of your barn to be brown. And I have a little silo here. I want it to be brown. So you take a little bit of your orange and you move it to a different spot that no one else is using. Okay? You don't mess up the whole puddle of paint that everyone's using. You get a little from the side of blue and you mix them together. Blue and orange are gonna make a brown. If it looks too blue, then you put a little more orange. If it looks too orange, you put a little more blue. If it looks too green, you can put a little red. Till you get whatever kind of muddy color you want for the top of your barn. Okay. Okay, now before you get a clean color, you want to wash off your brush. Make sure it's not drippy. If you need to wipe it on the paper towel, you can, but make sure it's not drippy first. Now I'm going to turn it upside down so it's a little easier to reach. And go for the blue sky. Alright, here is our last step for this project. After you've got all the colors in, we're going to take our black and pretty much like we would do when we were tracing we're going to paint all the outlines. So you're going to need a thin brush for this and you're going to need to try and keep the brush in line. You should never be smooshing it. If you're having to smoosh it then you don't have paint on your bristles and it's going to make a really thick line. Okay. Um, if you can't see exactly where your pencil lines are just try your best. Just make it a uh, how it looks good now, you know, even if it's not your original plan. Just start going around and tracing where you think there should be a black line. There I have my painted farm landscape. Okay guys, have fun. Bye.